Okay, all praises. Again, tonight's topic is called the power of repentance. Okay, let's open up with the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 36. Let's read that. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assured, assuredly that God had made the same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. So now, what we're reading here, this is Luke, Luke wrote the book of Acts. Okay, Luke wrote the book of Acts. Okay, read again for me, verse 36. The book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 36. Read. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God had made the same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. So now, this is to the 12 tribes of Israel, because you see what he's saying? He says, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now, you need to understand, this whole Bible is to the 12 tribes of Israel. You understand? That's why the, the, the prophets, our forefathers that came before us, they always reminded us, you understand, that this book is to the 12 tribes of Israel. That's why Luke is mentioning here, says, let all the house of Israel, all 12, southern kingdom, northern kingdom. You understand? Because, remember, Christ was crucified. But he was crucified for who? He was crucified for the 12 tribes of Israel. Now watch this. Give me the book of Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5 and verse 30. Read that. The book of Acts chapter 5 verse 30. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom he slew and hanged on a tree. You see what he's saying? He says the God of our fathers. Not the God of everybody's father. Mm -mm. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom he slew and hanged on a tree. Go ahead. Him had God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for mm -hmm. to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sin. You see that thing? It says, him a God exalted to be a prince and a savior. A savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. So Christ didn't die for all men. He only died for the 12 tribes of Israel. He only died for his people. That means all 12 tribes of Israel, we are the only ones that are justified by the, by the death of Christ. You understand? Give me Isaiah 45, 25. Isaiah 45 is 25. The book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 25. Read. In the Lord shall all the seed of Israel be justified and shall glory. You see what he's saying? In the Lord shall all the seed of Israel be justified. Because another thing that we tend to forget is that when we, when, because when you read about it, you read about the children of Israel, the children of Israel, okay? But people tend to forget that Israel was a man, Okay? Israel was a man. He had sons. Okay. So when you hear spiritual Israel, you see like they don't actually understand that Israel was a man. He had children. Those children is the children that are eligible for the promises that was given to our forefather Abraham. You understand? Give me the book of Romans chapter 9 verse 4. Romans chapter 9 verse 4. Watch this. You know, what? We'll start of verse 3. Romans 9, verse 3. Let's start there. The book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 3. Mm -hmm. For I wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh. So now the apostle Paul is saying what Christ did, he wishes he could, he could have been the one that to do it. You understand? For my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh. He's going to tell you who his brethren is. He's going to tell you who his kings are, according to the flesh, meaning by bloodline. You understand? Because we need to understand, which tribe was the Apostle Paul from? Give me Romans 11 verse 1, so we can understand when he says, my kingsmen, my brethren, according to the flesh. Romans 11 verse 1, read that. The book of Romans chapter 11 verse 1. Come on. I say then, that God cast away his people, God forbid, for Many know. So he says, has God cast away his people? So the subject matter here is about God's people. You understand? Ray. For I also am an Israelite of mm. the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. 
You see what he's saying? He says, I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. He's being very specific because he says he's from the seed of Abraham. Then he says, of the tribe of Benjamin. Guess what? Which means he's telling you that I come from Abraham, then Isaac, then Jacob. You understand? And I'm from the, I'm from the father whose name was Benjamin. You understand? That's what he's saying right there. Okay? Go back to Romans. So he's telling you, 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 if you say you are an Israelite, it's according to what? It's according to the seed of Abraham and according to your tribe. You see that? So there's no, there's no spiritual in anything here. It's by blood. You understand? Give me that in row. Go back to Romans 9 now. Romans 9 verse 3. Read what you got. Book of Romans chapter 9 verse 3. Go for ahead. I could, for I could wish that myself were cursed from Christ for my brethren, my mm -hmm. kinsmen to the flesh. So keep reading. Verse 4 now. Watch this. Who are Israelites? Who are Israelites? So his kinsmen, his brethren, according to the flesh, is the Israelites. Okay, go ahead. Who are Israelites? To whom mm. pertain the adoption? To whom do what? To whom pertain the adoption? The word pertains means belong to. To whom belongeth the adoption? What is the adoption? It says to the Israelites pertains the adoption. Remember the subject matter here is about Paul's kinsmen and his brethren who are Israelites. To whom, to the Israelites, belongeth the adoption. Give me that in Galatians, okay? Galatians 4. Galatians 4 verse 4. Watch this. To whom pertaineth the adoption, okay? Galatians 4 verse 4. The book of Galatians, chapter 4 verse 4. Read. But, but when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. So now when it says the fullness of time was come, it's talking about nine months in your mother's womb. You understand? He says, God sent forth his son, Jesus the Christ, made of a woman, made under the law. What law is he referring to? The law of childbirth. Because in order for a woman to be pregnant, a man must sleep with a woman. That is what we're reading here. So this right here destroys that immaculate, immaculate conception garbage. There is no immaculate conception in the Bible. That's a Roman Catholic doctrine. You understand? Read. To redeem them that were under the law, mm. that, that we might receive the adoption of sons. You see what he's saying? To redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. So who was under the law that needed to be redeemed? The children of Israel. You understand? Give me that in Hebrews 9 verse 15 real quick. Hebrews 9. I'm going to touch on this again. Hebrews 9 verse 15. Okay. The book of Rome, the, the book of Hebrews chapter 9 verse 15. Read. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. You see that thing? So the people that were under the first testament is the 12 tribes of Israel, which, is, which would be us today. You understand? So now, when we go back now, go back to Galatians 4 verse 5. The book of Galatians chapter 4 verse 5. Read. To redeem them, to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. To redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. So who was adopted from the old covenant to the new? The children of Israel. Go back to Romans chapter 9, verse 4. The book of Romans chapter 9, verse 4. Mm -hmm. Who are Israelites? To whom pertain the adoption? We see that glory. thing? To whom pertained the adoption? We just read that adoption in Galatians 4. Read. And the glory. And mm -hmm. the, the, glory of the, the glory is the glory of the kingdom. Okay. The glory of the kingdom. The kingdom of heaven belongs to the children of Israel. Watch this. Give me Matthew 24. Okay. Matthew chapter 24. Matthew 24 and verse 14. 
the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. You see, it says the gospel of the kingdom. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. This, you see this verse right here, this part right here when it says all nations, this is where Christians, they fall off right here. They say, you see, it says all nations. Watch this. Give me, uh, let's see the prophecy. Give me Matthew. I mean, give me Deuteronomy 4. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 27. Let's see what the prophecy says. Okay, read that. We're coming back to Matthew. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verses 27. Come on. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations, and ye shall be left few in number among the heathen, whither the Lord shall lead you. You see what he's saying? He says, he shall, he says, the Lord shall scatter you among the nations. You understand? How did the Lord scatter us among the nations? We were sold via, during the, the slave trade, you understand? On slave ships. We had yokes of iron on our necks. We were sold on slave auction blocks. If you look at Cape Town, there was a lot of ships coming to Cape Town. You understand? As an example. Okay. Um, we were colonized. You understand? We were forced to migrate as a nation. That's how we were scattered among all these nations on earth. Okay, go back. Matthew 24, verse 14. The book of Matthew, chapter 24, verses 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. So now, because if Christianity was the true gospel... That means the world should have been, the end should have come already. Because Christianity is preached throughout the whole earth. Everybody knows Jesus as white. When the Bible does not say anything even anymore, the, the Bible doesn't say anything related to, the Bible doesn't say Jesus Christ is white. G the Bible tells you that Christ is a black man, as it is written in Revelation 1, 14 and 15. But everybody on the earth, they know about Christianity a lot of people are Christians on this earth and they follow the doctrine of Christianity, worshiping white Jesus, okay? But if that was the true gospel, then the end should have come already. The end has not come because the true gospel has not been preached in all the world. That's what's going on right now. The true gospel is going out now. The true gospel of Christ, okay? The good news, you understand? So it says the gospel of the kingdom. So we need to understand who does the kingdom of heaven belong to? Watch this. Give me the book of Acts, okay? Acts chapter 1, Acts 1 verse 6. Watch this. The book of Acts chapter 1 verse 6. Mm -hmm. They therefore were come together. They asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou this time restore again the kingdom of is to Israel? You see what they are saying? He says, Lord, will thou, this is the disciples now. They came together. They spoke to Christ. He says, will thou, Christ, at this time? Because who was ruling during this time? Rome. You understand? During the Acts of the Apostles, Rome was still, well, Rome was in power. He says, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? You cannot restore something that was never together in the first place. You understand? So it says, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Because we had the kingdom before, we lost it. You understand? So they thought during this time when Christ walked the earth during the time of Rome, they thought, our forefathers at that time, they thought Christ was coming to deliver them from slavery under Rome. But that was not the case. You understand? We needed to go into slavery. The cases of Deuteronomy 28, you understand? Verse 15 through 68, they all needed to happen. We needed to go into slavery. We needed to be colonized. You understand? We needed to go through the system of apartheid, oppression, discrimination. You understand? All the atrocities that, have, that would have happened, they all needed to be fulfilled in the scriptures according to Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, or Leviticus 26. You understand? So that's why that was not the time to restore the kingdom to us at that time. Okay? Go back to uh, Romans now. Romans 9. Okay, Romans 9 and verse 4 again. The book of Romans, chapter 9, verses 4. Who are Israelites to whom pertained the adoption and the glory 
mm -hmm. the covenant. And the what? And, and the covenant. And the covenant, plural. And the covenant is letting you know the adoption belongs to the Israelites. The glory of the kingdom belongs to the Israelites and the covenant. Okay. Give me that in Hebrews chapter 8. Hebrews 8 and 8. The covenant, plural. Old and new. Hebrews 8 verse 8. Read that. The book of Hebrews chapter 8 verses 8. Mm -hmm. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, said the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. So the new covenant is with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. All 12 tribes. Go ahead. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. Really? Because they because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them, not said the Lord. So now he says, I'm going to make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with them when I brought them out of Egypt. Because when we were came out of Egypt, what covenant was given to us? The commandments, the law of animal sacrifice. That is the covenant that we made. And that covenant was sealed with what? Animal sacrifice. To get forgiveness through the killing of animals so that the blood of the animal will cover you. You understand? Under the new covenant now, the blood of Christ is what covers us. Okay? So the old and new covenants belong to the children of Israel. Let's go back to Romans now. Chapter 9 verse 4 again. The book of Romans, chapter 9 verse 4. Mm -hmm. Who are Israelites? To whom pertain the adoption and the glory? and the covenant, and the giving of the law, and the service of God, and the promises. You see that thing? The giving of the law. The laws of God was given to us. This Bible was given to the children of Israel. You understand? And the service of God. Who are the servants of God? We are the servants of God. And the promises. All the promises that are written in this book pertains to the children of Israel. That's what the Apostle Paul is saying. So what we read in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 36, guess what? Is pertaining to us. Okay, next verse. Go ahead. Verse 5. Verse 5. Whose are the fathers and to whom, as concerning the flesh, as concerning the flesh, Christ came? Who is over all? God blessed forever. Amen. Now that's a heavy verse right there. It says, whose are the fathers? Who's the fathers? Abraham. Isaac, Jacob, and of whom as concerning the flesh. Who's the flesh? The Israelites, according to the flesh. My brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, meaning by bloodline. Verse 5 is letting you know who Christ came for. You understand? It says, and of whom as concerning the flesh, Christ came. Meaning Christ came for only for the Israelites. He didn't come for everybody. He only came for the Israelites. He died for the Israelites. And when he's coming to, when he's, he's going to make his second coming, he's only coming for the children of Israel. The children, the sons and daughters of Jacob. You understand? That's the, that's the good news. Okay? That's the good news right there. Now let's go back to the book of Acts now. Acts 2.36. The book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 36. Read. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God had made the same Jesus whom he have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Because the same Jesus that was crucified, he was crucified for the children of Israel to bring all 12 tribes together as one. You understand? He says, now he says, he says, we have crucified is both Lord and Christ. Go ahead, verse 37. Now, when they heard this, they were, they were pricked in their heart. And, mm -hmm. said unto, and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men, men and brethren, what shall we do? So now it says when they heard this, it says they were pricked, meaning they were cut to the heart. Why was the multitude cut to the heart? This is why. Give me John 6. Okay. Give me, you know what? Give me Acts 17. I'll go to John 6 in a second. Give me the book of Acts chapter 17. Okay. Now that we're in the book of Acts. Give me Acts 17 and verse, verse 4. 
You know what? You can start at verse 2. Now, this is the Apostle Paul, okay? This is the Apostle Paul in Thessalonica. He is teaching in the synagogue of the Jews. Our forefathers that were scattered in Thessalonica. Okay? Acts 17, verse 2. Watch this. The book of Acts, chapter 17, verse 2. Read. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures. Okay, that's what we do. When we go to the streets, we reason with our people out of the scriptures. We don't speak what we think. Okay, come on. Opening and alleging that Christ might, must need have suffered and risen again from the dead. Read. And, that, and that this Jesus, whom I preach unto you, is Christ. Because remember, this, you know this scripture right here? I remember there was a brother that came to the streets. I think we was teaching in Midrand. And he came and said, no, Jesus is not Christ. Yeah, like the foolishness, yeah. And he's, he was saying it with so much boldness, okay? He says, no, Jesus is not Christ. He said, no, Jesus is not Christ. Christ is the anointed. He's the anointing. So I asked him, I said, wait a minute. So is Christ and Jesus two different people? He said, no. But I'm like, wait a minute. You are saying Jesus is not Christ. But when I ask you, is Christ and Jesus different people? He's saying no. The brother was just confused. He was bugged out. Okay. Keep going. Verse 3. No, no, verse 4, I believe. The book of Acts, chapter 17, verse 4. Read. And some believed and, con and consorted with Paul and Silas. Mm -hmm. And of the Greeks, a great multitude. And of the chief women, not a few. So now there are those that believed when the apostle Paul was teaching. And they said they consulted, they consulted with Paul and Silas. Meaning what? They decided to join them because they believe what they was teaching as it is written. Okay? But watch the next verse. Go ahead. But the Jews which believed not mm -hmm. moved with Go ahead. Took, un took unto them certain, certain lewd fellows of the Beza sort mm -hmm. and gathered, gathered a company and set all the city on an uproar and assaulted the house of Jason and sought to bring them out to the people. So now you see what happened? There are those that believed and there are those that believed not. Those of our forefathers and foremothers that did, didn't believe nothing that the apostle Paul and Silas was teaching. It says they, were, they believed not and they were moved with envy and took unto them certain lewd fellows, meaning these are those grimy Negroes who hate what's coming out of this Bible. They hate what is written. It says, of the baser sort, and gathered unto them a company and set all the city on an uproar. Meaning what? They, get, they were gathering the people against the apostle Paul and Silas. So that the people can what? Can go against them and beat them. Because that's what, we, that's what would happen. You understand? I remember one time we were teaching at camp and, you know, the scriptures was coming out. This brother threw, hit me with a bottle. I think I was bleeding for like two days or something. Okay. He was mad as hell. He was that mad. The brother hit me with a bottle. I mean, no, no, not with a bottle. With a stone. He's, that brother is stoned me. Okay. So only because we are reading out the Bible. That's the, there's power. This Bible is alive. Okay. This Bible is alive. Understand that. So the reason why they were pricked to the, in their hearts is because they didn't believe. So when, they are, when Peter was teaching, that's what they were like. They were, they were cut to the heart. That's what we just read in the book of Acts chapter 2. They were cut to the heart because of what? Unbelief. Because the people that followed Christ, there was a lot of people that did not believe what Christ was teaching. The same way, the people that followed the apostles, many of them did not believe. And I'll give an example. Give me John 6 verse 64. Okay? John 6 verse 64. Read that. John 6, 64. Come on. The book of John, chapter 6, verses 64. Read. But, but there are some of you that believe not. For mm. Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. You see what Christ said? The people that followed him, he said, listen, there are some of you that don't believe. You understand? And he says, Christ knew from the get-go who they were that didn't believe and who should betray him. You understand? So an unbeliever 
is a what that that's a bit that's a Judas. A person that don't believe this truth, they are they are a Judas. They are a Judas waiting to happen because you see what he's saying here he says, uh, he knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. So what does that mean to believe? Let's go to the book. Let's go to the book of James. Okay. Give me James 2 real quick. Let's go to the book of James. The apostle James, he talked about this thing. James chapter 2 verse 17. Watch this. The book of James chapter 2 verses 17. Read. Even, even so faith, if it had not works, it is dead being alone. So it says faith without works is dead if it's just alone. Watch this. Go ahead. Yea, a man may say, that was faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. So now James is now is James is taking it a step further. He says, I will show you my faith by my works. Because what guess what? You can't say I believe, but you don't show you don't do nothing to show forth that you believe. You understand? If you believe you're gonna get paid. At the end of the month, you do you work at Esau's plantation. You understand? You go to Esau's plantation, you do the work because you believe that at the end of the month, you're going to get your salary. So now, likewise, in this truth, if you believe on Christ, you understand? You have faith, you must show it by your works. What is the works? Give me the book of Psalms, okay? Give me Psalm 78. Psalm 78 and verse, it might be verse 10. Let me look at it. Psalm 78, verse 7. Read that. Let me write it down. Of Psalms, chapter 78, verse 7. That they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. You see what the works of God are? The commandments. The works are the commandments. It says that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. So the works of the Lord are his commandments. When you say you believe, you have faith, you understand? Your works, your, your faith is shown by your works. What is the works? The commandments of the Most High. You understand? It's always been about the commandments. It, from the beginning of time, when Aram was given the law in Genesis 2 verse 7, it's always been the commandments. It's never been about anything else. If you say you have faith, you believe, you must be keeping God's commandments. You understand? Watch this. Let's go back now. Go back to James, okay? James 2. The book of James, chapter 2, verse 17. Verse 18. The book of James, chapter 2, verse 18. Mm -hmm. Yea, a man may say, Thou was faith, and I have works. Really? Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. You see that thing? And I will show you my faith by my works. So what, what Christ was saying in the book of John is saying, but there's some of you that don't believe. You understand? Why? Because they didn't have faith. That's the reason why you see our forefathers in the wilderness. They saw the miracles when they were delivered out of Egypt. The problem with our forefathers and foremothers in the wilderness is that they did not have faith. They lacked faith. You understand? That's why many of them that all first generation, they all got put to death except for Joshua and Caleb. Joshua and Caleb is the one that made it into the promised land. The rest was the children. The rest was the children, the sons and the daughters. But guess what? None of the women made it into the wilderness. I'm talking about the first generation. Our mothers, they all died. Okay? The only ones that made it into the promised land was the children. Daughters, sons and daughters and Caleb and Joshua, which was part of that first generation that came out of Egypt. The rest was dead. You understand? So you sisters, you really need to think about it and say, wait a minute. None of their foremothers made it out. Yes, they did not make it out. And remember, we was just coming out of Egypt. Egypt was a superpower. Today in 2021, listen, if you look at how the media glorifies the black woman, I'm an independent woman. I don't need no man. You understand? Men are dogs and all of that. Listen, you really need to think about it and say, okay, in this, in, in these last days where we at, 
where they are teaching the black woman to disrespect the black man. We see it in the media. So you can't say I'm lying because we see it on a day to day. Okay. Do you think that the sisters are going to make it out? Many of them are going to die here when the Lord returns. I'm telling you right now. They disrespect their husbands. They disrespect their fathers. You understand? They speak evil of their brothers. They hate and despise their brothers, their, 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 their brothers, their fathers, and their husbands. Yes. Not my Jesus. Yes, my Jesus. Okay? That's what's going on. So we have to make sure that we humble down to what this Bible says. You understand? Women must submit themselves to the role that the Lord gave unto them. You understand? Just like the men must submit themselves to the role that God gave them. That's how we're going to build the nation of Israel. Men and women in one agreement, one mind, one thought process. You understand? The woman in complete subject, subjection to the black man. You understand? The black man being complete subjection to, the, to Christ. That's the order. Okay, I'm dabbling into the marriage classes again. Let me pull myself back. Okay, go back to Acts 2. Acts 2.37. Read what you got. Okay. Acts 2 verse 37. Watch this. The book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 37. Come on. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? So now they are, they are asking the, the apostles, what must we do now based on this situation? Because they were cut to the heart. Watch this. This is the solution that the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Peter, excuse me, brought to the people. Watch this. Next verse. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So now, that's some heavy stuff right there. It says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent, repent. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, for the forgiveness of your sins. Watch this. Give me, you see that part when it says repent? Because guess what? The apostles were following after the footsteps of Christ. Because Christ's first ministry, what was he teaching? Give me that in Matthew 4, verse 17. Matthew, chapter 4, verse 17. This is Christ's first ministry. Okay? Read that. The book of Matthew, chapter 4, verses 17. Mm -hmm. From the time Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You see what he was teaching? Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So what Christ was teaching is not different from what the apostles were teaching. They were following after his footsteps. You understand? So he was. what was Christ teaching? He was teaching repentance. Christ was teaching repentance. He says, repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And this word repent is thrown around all over in the Christian church. You understand? They don't understand what it means. They don't even explain it to the people what it means. Give me the book of Acts chapter 3 verse 19. Let's understand what Christ was really teaching when he says repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The same thing what the apostle Peter said. Acts 3 verse 19. Watch this. The book of Acts chapter 3 verse 19. Mm. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your, sins, that your sins may be blotted out when the time of refresh, refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. You see what he's saying? He says, repent ye therefore and be converted. So when you repent, guess what? You must be converted. You understand? He says, repent and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. That's the benefit of repentance. Your sins will be blotted out. So the question is, what converts us? Okay? What converts you from that sinful man to that righteous man? That sinful woman to that righteous woman of the Most High? Give me that in Give me that in Psalms 19. Psalms 19 verse 7. This is what converts us. Okay? The book of Psalms, chapter 19 verse 7. Read. The law of the perfect. The book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The law of the Lord is perfect. The law, 
So the law is what's going to convert you. He says the laws of God is perfect, converting the soul. So the laws of God is what's going to turn is going to turn a woman, I mean a, a a girl into a woman. The laws of God was what's going to turn a boy into a man. The laws of God is what's going to do that. Not politics, not religion, certainly not why Jesus. You understand? Why Jesus is being shoved down our throat for as long as we can remember since the missionaries came here. You understand? That's why all these false religions are opened. You understand? You've got the seven day disadvantage. You've got the Jehovah's wickedness. You've got your ZCCs. You've got the Abba Zalwani and so forth. Abu Pastor Chris and all. Listen, none of them, they are teaching our people to repent. They are teaching our people, Jesus loves you no matter what. What scripture is that? It's not in the Bible. He loves me no matter what. Mm -mm, that's not in the Bible. Give me that in Proverbs chapter 8, verse 17. Okay? This is what the Lord said. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 17. Because that's what they teach. They give our people license to sin. That's why there's a church at every corner, in the classes, wherever we are. But abortion is so high. Single parent household. There's no marriage. Men and women are having sex, breaking God's laws. You understand? But... Guess what? There's a church at every corner. Every Sunday, our people be whooping and hollering in those churches, jumping up and down, talking about I got the Holy Ghost. You can't make this stuff up. Give me Proverbs chapter 8, verse 17. Watch this. The book of Proverbs chapter 8, verses 17. Go ahead. I love them that love me, mm. and those that love me early shall find me. You see what Christ is saying? He says, I love them that love me. And those that seek me early shall find me. So what does it mean to love the Lord? Give me that in 1 John 5 and 3. He says, I love them that love me. That means those that don't love him, he don't love them back. 1 John 5 and 3. Watch this. The book of 1 John, chapter 5, verses 3. Go ahead. For well, this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. That's something. You see that? This is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. So this is, this is, John is telling us, this is how you love God. You must keep his commandments. You understand? So when we go back to Proverbs chapter 8, verse 17. The book of Proverbs. Chapter 8, verse 17. Go ahead. I love, I love them that love me, and mm -hmm. those that seek me shall find me. So Christ said, Christ is, I love them that love me. So how do we love him? How do we love the Lord? We keep his commandments. Then he's going to love us back. Because we do what he says. We do as he commands us. You understand? We don't do as it pleases us. No, we do as is as he's commanded. Now watch this. Give me the book of Baruch real quick. Let me show you something. Baruch chapter 4. Okay. Baruch 4. Let me see what verse I want. Baruch chapter 4 and verse 13. Watch this. The book of Baruch chapter 4 verse 13. They mm -hmm. knew not the truth. Read. Nor walked, nor walked in the way of his commandments. Nor trod, nor trod. in the path. Mm -hmm. Trod in the path of discipline in his righteousness. You see what Baruch is saying? He says, they knew not his statutes, nor walked in the ways of his commandments, nor trod in the path of discipline in his righteousness. Guess what? You see that part right there? He says, the path of discipline. The laws of God is going to discipline you. The laws of God will give you discipline. Meaning what? He says, you must be disciplined in the righteousness of God. What does that mean? You must be, you must be, you, you have to keep the laws of God no matter how, how in distress you are. You have to keep God's commandments. You must keep God's commandments whether you are in distress, whether you are stressed out, whether things are bad, you keep God's laws no matter what, what's going on in your life. You keep the commandments. That's what he's saying right there. You understand? He says the parts of discipline in his righteousness. So you have to be, keep God's commandment. It doesn't matter what you keep the laws of God. That's what he's saying right there. Okay. Let's go back. Let's go to, let's go back to where he was at now. Okay. 
because I wanted to touch on that because as a people, we are definitely being lied to in these churches. Go back to Acts 3 verse 19. Okay? Acts chapter 3 verse 19. Read that. The book of Acts chapter 3 verses 19. Mm -hmm. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. You see that thing? So when to repent, you must be converted. What converts us? The laws of God, according to Psalms 19 verse 7. God's commandment is what's going to convert you. Is what's going to change your thinking. The way you think, what you eat, which holidays you celebrate, you understand? You, you, which high holidays to observe, how to dress. The laws of God will teach you that. You're not going to eat whatever you want. You can't eat pork. You can't eat shrimp, lobster, crab, calamari. You can't eat none of that because it's outside of God's dietary law. You can't wear pants as a woman. You can't wear a dress as a man. You must grow a beard on your face as a man. You must put on a headscarf on your head as a sister. You must wear a long dress that does not show the shape of your body. That only belongs to your husband. That's what it means to convert. That's what it means to repent. And that's the message that Christ taught. That's what the apostles taught. That's what we're teaching this day. Okay? Now watch this. Go back to X 238 now. X 2. Verse 38. The book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 38. Read. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So now, I want to touch on this thing. It says, And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. Now, you see this baptism part here. Baptism. Because today in the churches, they are still pushing water baptism, okay? They are still dipping our people in a pool of water, you understand? They go in there, they, they are dipped in water. You are a homosexual, you are dipped in water. You still come out a homosexual. The only difference is your clothes are wet now. You go in as a homonger, you come out a wet homonger. You see that thing? You have a lying spirit on you. You are dipped in water, you come out, you are, you are you're still a liar. But you're, the only difference is that you are wet. That's all. That's the only difference. You understand? So let's deal with that. Give me the book. Give me the book of, um, give me Romans 6. Okay. Romans chapter 6. Let's deal with baptism. Just for a second. Romans chapter 6. Let's start at verse 3. Romans 6 verse 3. The book of Romans chapter 6 verse 3. Mm -hmm. Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. It says, it says those that were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death. I Meaning when Christ died, we also supposed to die spiritually so we can what? We can be resurrected, be born again. Go ahead. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. Mm -hmm. Death. Like as Christ was risen, was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in, in newness of life. We also should walk in newness of life. You see, Christ was baptized into death, meaning he was crucified. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead, meaning after three days he is risen on the Sabbath by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Meaning what? We must be born again. You understand? We must be born again. So that's the baptism is talking about. You understand? Read on. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we hmm. shall also in the likeness of his resurrection. You see that thing? The same way Christ was, we, we was same Christ, the same way Christ died, was crucified, we also must be crucified. We must present our bodies as a living sacrifice. Okay, so it says we should also in the likeness of his resurrection to be born again. Go ahead. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, mm -hmm. that, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. 
You see, that's the key. The key to this work, everything that we are reading is in verse 6. He says, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed. So that old man, our old man, the old man, the old woman, guess what? Must be destroyed. The body of sin, meaning the body that is subject unto sin. Watch this. Give me Romans 6. Okay. Romans chapter 6. Same chapter. Um, let me see. No, no. You know what? Give me the book of Wisdom of Solomon. Give me Wisdom of Solomon real quick. I think I'll use that. Wisdom of Solomon. I don't have time to look for this now. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1 and verse... Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1 verse 4. I think that's what I want actually. Yep. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1 and verse 4. Let's read that. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1 verse 4. Mm -hmm. For into a malicious soul, wisdom shall not enter. Go ahead. Not dwell, not dwell in the body that is subject unto sin. That's the key. That's the, that's, that's the verse I was looking for. Not dwell in the body that is subject unto sin. So that, that sin, that, that old man, he says, what we, what we read in Romans 6 when it says that the body of sin might be destroyed. So the body of sin is the body that is subject unto sin. Meaning you subject yourself to breaking the laws of God. That's what sin is. Give me that in 1 John 3 and 4. For those that don't know what sin is. 1 John 3 verse 4. Let's read that. The book of 1 John chapter 3 verse 4. Read. Whosoever, whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. So sin is the breaking of God's law. So when we go back to Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1 verse 4. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 4. Mm -hmm. For into a malicious soul, wisdom shall not enter, nor dwell in the body that is subject unto sin. You see that thing? So into a malicious soul, an unstable soul, wisdom will not enter. The wisdom, wisdom is the laws of God, the spirit of understanding the Bible. Nor dwell into in the body that is subject unto sin. Meaning the body that subjects itself to the breaking of God's laws. You understand? So now, the body that subjects itself to the breaking of God's laws, the Bible says that body must be destroyed so that you can walk in the newness of life, meaning you must be born again. Give me that in Romans now. Romans 12. Okay? Romans chapter 12. Let's start at verse 1. The book of Romans chapter 12, verses 1. Mm -hmm. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So we, we are commanded to present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. So that body that you present as a living sacrifice, guess what? That's when the old man is put to death and now you walk in the newness of life. Now you present your body a living sacrifice now. You understand? How do you do that? You apply the laws of God to your life. Watch this. Give me Sirach 35 and 1. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 35. In the Apocrypha, chapter 35 and verse 1. This is how you present your body a living sacrifice. Okay? The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 35, verse 1. Read. He that keepeth the law bringeth offering enough. He that taketh heed to the commandments offereth a peace offering. You see that thing? So he says, he that keepeth the law bringeth offerings enough. So when you keep God's commandments, that's how you present your body as a living sacrifice. Okay? He that taketh heed to the commandments offereth a peace offering. You're going to have peace between you and the Father through our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. You understand? Go ahead. Go back. Romans 12 now verse 2. The book of Romans chapter 12 verse 2. Mm -hmm. and, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You see that thing? So now you must say, do not conform to this world. Because the world, the world that we live in now, you know what they do? 
they teach our people to break the laws of God. How do they do that? They say the laws of God are done away with. Christ fulfilled the law, so I can do whatever I want. No, no, that's not what the Bible says. You understand? When you conform to this world, the Bible teaches that man is the head of the house. The world teaches, no, 50-50. Men and women are equal. That's not in the Bible. You understand? The world will teach you a man, it's okay for a man to remove his beard. You understand? To shave his beard off, to make chisco on his head. That's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible says a, a, a beard is a badge of manly dignity. So a man must have a beard on his face. A man must not make chisco on his face. A man must put on fringes on his clothes. So is the woman. A woman must wear a dress, not dress like a man. You understand? Because everything in this, in this, in this land, wherever we are scattered, it's against the Bible. They teach that you can be whatever you want. You can be homosexual. You can be a lesbian. You can be gay. It's all good in Jesus. That's not in the Bible. Okay? That's not in the Bible. So that's why we have to teach the Bible as it is written. Okay? No fear, no favor. Okay? Now, let's go back to Romans now. Chapter 6. Romans 6 and verse... Read Romans 6 verse 6 one more again. The book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Meaning what? We do not subject our bodies to what? To sin. Like it says in Wisdom of Solomon 1 and 4. So the baptist, when it says, go back to Acts 2 now, verse 38. So we don't lose the thought. Acts 2, verse 38. The book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 38. Mm -hmm. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sin. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. It says, this baptism that we are reading about here, he says, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. Meaning for the forgiveness of your sins, because of why? We break in the laws of God. So now when we repent, we repent by acknowledging our sins because the laws of God is taught to us. Because the laws of God is taught to us, we get to see the things that we are doing wrong according to God. Then we repent from that. You understand? And it says, and be baptized, meaning what? The same way Christ was buried, you also must be buried. You must crucify. The old man must be put to death so that the new one, the, your, your new man, your spiritual man can grow up. You understand? And you present your body, your new body now, your, sp your spirit, you present it as a living sacrifice that is holy, meaning cleansed. How you get cleanse your body, your spirit, your mind, you apply the laws of God to your life. Okay? That's what the Apostle Peter is teaching us here. Okay? It says, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Because the water baptism, water baptism is, not, is no longer. Water baptism was temporary. You understand? Water baptism was temporary. We're not supposed to be doing that now. Okay, let's go. Let's, let's get there, actually, real quick. Give me the book of um, Matthew chapter 3. Okay, Matthew chapter 3 and verse... May read that. Matthew 3 verse 11. Read that. The book of Matthew chapter 3 verses 11. Mm -hmm. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. You see what John is saying? John is telling us, listen, me right now, I'm baptizing with water. But the one that comes after me, he's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost. So what was John telling us here? John was telling us, listen, the water baptism that I'm doing is only what is always temporary. It's not forever. You understand? The, but the one that comes after me, he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Who was he referring to? He was talking about Christ. Okay? Give me uh, Luke. Give me Luke chapter 13. No. I think what I want, not Luke. I need John. I'm looking for John. Yes. John 3. Give me that in John 3 verse 30. This is what John said. Watch this. Okay. John chapter 3 verse 30. John said this. 
Read it. The book of John, chapter 3, verse 30. Mm -hmm. he, he must increase, but I must decrease. You see what you see what John said? John kept saying it is telling us over and over. Christ, I must I must decrease, but Christ must increase, meaning the one that come after me, he's gonna increase. How? Because he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost, not with water. Water baptism was temporary, but today the churches are still doing it. Okay. The apostle Peter talked about the same thing. Give me that in first Peter 3, verse 21. Okay, first Peter 3. Verse 21. But our people still don't listen. Okay? They think there's power in the water. There's no power in the water. Okay? First Peter 3, verse 21. Read that. The book of First Peter, chapter 3, verse 21. Mm -hmm. The like figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us. Not the putting away of the field of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience towards God. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So the apostle Peter is saying, listen, baptism doesn't save you. The only, he says the water doesn't save you. You understand? He says not to putting away of the filth of the flesh. That's what the water does. The water will only put away the filth of the flesh. You understand? But the thing that the Lord is looking for, he says what? But the answer of a good conscience towards God. How do you get a good conscience towards God? You keep the commandments. Because the commandments of God will teach you sense, to have a sound mind. You understand? So that's the good conscience, as pertaining to your conscience, your thoughts. That's, that's what, what, what gets your thoughts to be straight is the laws of God. The laws of God will make your thought process to be correct. Okay? So that's what he's saying. So now, remember, he said, I must decrease, he must increase. The one that comes after me, he's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost. The same thing that the Apostle Peter said in Acts 2 verse 38. Now the question is, what is the Holy Ghost that he's talking about that Christ will be baptizing us with? Watch this. Give me the book of Acts chapter 7 now. Acts 7 verse 51. The book of Acts chapter 7 verse 51. Read. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye to always resist the Holy Ghost, as your fathers did so do ye. So the subject matter is about the Holy Ghost which our forefathers resisted. You understand? The same way our fathers resisted the Holy Ghost in the past, he's saying even today also, we are resisting the Holy Ghost. Now jump down to verse 53 so we know what the Holy Ghost is that our fathers resisted. Read it. Verse 53. Who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it? So the Holy Ghost is the laws of God that our fathers resisted in the, in the wilderness and today also we are resisting. Today also we are resisting. So the Holy Ghost is the laws of God. That's what the Holy Ghost is. Watch this. Give me John 14, 26. John 14, verse 26. The book of John, chapter 14, verses 26. Mm -hmm. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. So this comforter is the Holy Ghost. Okay? The comforter is the Holy Ghost. It says the comforter will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Right? Watch this. Give me Acts chapter 11, verse 15. Acts. Acts chapter 11, verse 15. The book of Acts, chapter 11, verse 15. And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them, as on, as on us at the beginning. So he says, when he began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell upon them. Okay, watch this. Verse 16, come on. Then remembered I the word of the Lord, how that he said, John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. So now I want you to notice something here says, then remembered I the word of the Lord. So what was the word of the Lord that he remembered? Remember it says the Holy Ghost, the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, which the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. So this Holy Ghost, it says this Holy Ghost that fell upon them, 
He says, when it fell upon them, he says, then I remembered the word of the Lord. So what is the Holy Ghost? The word of God. The Holy Ghost is God's commandments. The Holy Ghost is not a person like they teach in church. They say the Holy Ghost is a person. That's why I think there's somebody that even wrote a book called Good Morning Holy Spirit. You can't make this stuff up. Confusion. I'm telling you. I remember back in the day when I was still in my simplicity, I went to this church called, I think the, the, church, the name of the church was called Acts. Yes. There's a, you know that church, right, brothers? There's a church called Acts. Acts Christian something. Anybody knows what I'm talking about? No, sir. No, sir. Don't nobody knows the, the church called Acts. It's a big, it's like, it's quite big actually in South Africa. There was a white Edomite. There was an Edomite, a white man that was teaching, okay? And he's the one that was pushing that garbage, saying, no, the Holy Spirit is a person. When you wake up, you must greet him. You know, I said there, I'm like, you know, I don't know nothing about the Bible, but this don't make no sense to me. Okay? And everybody was catching the Holy Ghost in the church. Everybody seemed to catch it but me. Okay? Everybody be catching this Holy Ghost. I'm like, what is this thing that they are talking about? Listen, the Holy Ghost is not a person. The Holy Ghost is the laws of God, as it is written. So the Holy Ghost, which is the word of God that fell upon them, brought them to their, to their remembrance, like what? Like who they are. What the prophets prophesied about Christ, that he should come and what? He should die for the 12 tribes of Israel and give us a chance to get the kingdom. Okay? So that is what we're reading here. So now he's saying, John indeed baptized you with water. This is Christ speaking now. He says, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, the laws of God. You understand? Christ didn't dip nobody in water. Christ did not dip anybody in water. You understand? Give me that in John 15 verse 3. This is, how Christ, this is, what, Christ, this is what Christ taught. He says, but the one that comes after me, ye shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Watch this. John 15, verse 3. Read that. The book of John, chapter 15, verses 3. Mm -hmm. Now, ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. You see what this is Christ speaking. He says, now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. So Christ washed with the word. He didn't dip nobody in water because the water baptism was done. It was no longer necessary to do water baptism. But there were many disciples that followed John, that what? That they were following John's baptism, which was the baptism of water. But even John's disciples also, they were taught by John to say, listen, I'm baptizing with water, but it's only temporary. The one that comes after me, he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost. He will teach you the law. You understand? That's what, they, that's what our people didn't believe because they always wanted something physical. So they believe that, no, 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 I need to be dipped in water to believe that something good is happening to me because they didn't have faith. So now we don't dip nobody in water. Apply the commandments because that's how Christ taught. Okay, watch this. Even after Christ left, the apostle Paul had to remind them about this thing. Give me that in 1 Corinthians, okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 17. Come on, 1 Corinthians 1, verse 17. Read that. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 1, verse 17. Go ahead. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. You see that thing? Not Hold on. It says, Christ sent me not to baptize. What is the baptism that he's making reference to? He is making reference to the water baptism. That's the, that's the, what, that's the baptism he's talking about. He says, Christ did not send me to baptize, meaning to baptize anybody in water, but to preach the gospel. That is what we are doing right now, preaching the gospel of Christ. Read. Not with wisdom of words, lest mm -hmm. the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. You see that thing? So he says, not with wisdom of words, meaning man's wisdom, but according to what the Holy Ghost teaches, which is what? The commandments, God's laws. So the baptism that the apostle, go back to Acts now, Acts 2.38, was still dealing with the power of repentance. Don't lose the thought. Okay. But I'm going through, the, there's a lot of 
this there's a this scripture is quite loaded so i'm breaking it down so you can understand read Acts 238 again the book of acts chapter 2 verses 38 mm -hmm. then peter said unto them repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of jesus christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the holy ghost so that gift of the holy ghost is the spirit of understanding the gift of the Holy Ghost is the understanding of the scriptures, the understanding of the Bible. You will not understand the scriptures if you don't apply the scriptures. The Bible is the only book that if you, for you to understand it, you must do what it says for you to understand what it's saying. Next verse. Watch this. Verse 39. Go ahead. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. You see, that's heavy right there. Remember, the subject matter is still about the Israelites. Don't forget it in verse 36, because it's therefore let, let all the house of Israel know, as shortly. So the subject matter is about the house of Israel and what the house of Israel needs to do. We need to repent, you understand, and be baptized, every one of us, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins, then we shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, knowledge and understanding. It says, for the promise is unto you. Who's the you? The children of the house of Israel. And to your children, okay? And to all that are far off, far from Jerusalem. Even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Because each and every one of you in here, you've been called by the Lord to do a job. To keep the, to learn the laws of God, to apply it to your life. And to be what? To be ready to go out there to wake your people up. That's what this is about. You understand? This is not the Christian church where you're going to be that church boy and you graduate to be an usher. No. That's not what this is about. Okay? Read verse 39 again. The book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 39. Read. For the promise is unto you and your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. So now, because the most High God, give me that in Isaiah 43 real quick. Okay, Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43 verse 1. The book of Isaiah, chapter 43, verses 1. Mm -hmm. But now, thus said the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by name, thou art mine. He says, I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. Who did the Lord call? The Lord called Israel. The Lord called Jacob. Now jump down to verse 10, because this is where the, that's where the Jehovah's Witnesses get their, their name, Jehovah's Witnesses. They, they get it from here. But they never read verse 1. Okay, read verse 10 now. Book of Isaiah chapter 43, verse 10. Mm -hmm. Ye are my witnesses, said the Lord, and my servants whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be any after me. So now what you are seeing here is that when this says ye are my witnesses, it's talking about what? It's talking about the two witnesses, which is Judah and Israel, southern kingdom, northern kingdom. That's the witnesses he's talking about. That's the one that, we are the witnesses that the Lord has called. He didn't call Jehovah's Witnesses, no. He called the 12 tribes of Israel, Judah and Israel, all 12 together as one. Okay, now watch this. Give me, give me the book of Romans 15 verse 4. Romans 15 verse 4. Come on, Romans 15 verse 4. The book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 4. Mm -hmm. For whatsoever thing were written afore time, were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. So the things that were written afore time were written for us to learn from. Because remember, what we just read in the book of Acts 2, verse 38, 36 through 38, is showing you that repentance was only, we are only. The, we are only the we are the only ones that are eligible for repentance. You understand? Because the laws of God was given to us. When we broke them, we went into slavery. 
You understand? Now the Lord is waking up the prophets to teach us so we can return back to this Bible. So we can rule the nations on earth and rule them forever. That's power. So the power behind that is to is what? We must repent and keep the laws of God if we want that power. Now watch this. Give me the book of Acts now. Let's go back to the book of Acts because um, before we get that, actually, give me Acts 1 verse 8. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Something I want to touch on. Okay. Because remember what the apostle Peter said in Acts 2. It says, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Read that. The book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Mm -hmm. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. You see that thing? Shall... Hold on. It says ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. So the power that we'll receive after the Holy Ghost is come upon us, we know what the Holy Ghost is now. The Holy Ghost is the laws of God. So the power that we will receive after that the Holy Ghost has come upon us is what? The kingdom of heaven on earth. Rulership of all nations on earth and living forever. That's the power we will receive once we receive the Holy Ghost. Now we have received the Holy Ghost. That's why we are able to go into the scriptures to understand what the Lord is saying. You understand? Read it again. The book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 8. Mm -hmm. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be with ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Meaning wherever we are scattered, because remember, there were Jews in Jerusalem and there were Jews in Samaria. Like uh, the tribe of Asher was there, the tribe of Naphtali, the tribe of Zebulon, the tribe of Ephraim. You understand? There was a remnant of them that was in the land in Galilee when Christ walked the earth. The majority of them was already in the Americas, calling themselves Native American Indians. You understand? The Seminole Indians and so forth. So now what we're reading here, the witnesses, when it says shall be witnesses, it's talking about Judah and Israel, all 12. You understand? So the power that we will receive, we're going to receive power to rule the nations. You understand? Watch this. Give me Romans 1.16 now. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. The book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 16. Mm -hmm. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So now, you see what he's saying? It says, the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God. So when you, when you repent, keep God's commandments, you're going to receive power. Before we get the kingdom, the power that we will have is the power to overcome sin. The power to overcome our sins. The stuff that we struggle with, brothers are struggling with porn. Some brothers are struggling with lying. Some brothers are struggling with big booty women. So on, whatever the struggle, whatever your struggle is, when you repent, that's your power right there. The laws of God is what's going to give you power to overcome. You understand? Before we can even have the power to rule the nations, we must have power to control our what? Our lusts with, by applying the laws of God to our lives. We must be disciplined in doing that. You understand? Do not let anybody hold you hostage in the sin that you are in. You have the power to repent. You understand? That's the, that's what, that's the power we have over all the nations on this earth. Watch this, Romans 3 verse 1. Okay, I just want to touch on that. Spirit just hit me on this thing. Romans 3 verse 1. Watch this. The book of Romans chapter 3 verse 1. Read. What advantage then had the Jew? Or mm -hmm. what profit of circumcision? He says, what advantage then had the Jews? In order for you to have an advantage, somebody must be at a disadvantage. And we, the children of Israel, we have an advantage over these nations because unto us was given the laws of God for us to repent, to overcome our sins. You understand? It says, what profit is there of circumcision? The prophet, the, the circumcision is talking about the covenant that the Lord made with our forefather Abraham. Okay, come on. Much every way, mm -hmm. chiefly 
cause, unto them were committed the oracles of God. Read it again. Read it right. Verse 2 again. The book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 2. Mm-hmm. Much, much every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. It says we have an advantage over all these nations on earth. The main reason why we have an advantage over them is he says, because unto them were committed the oracles of God. Unto us was given this Bible. You understand? Unto us was given this Bible and we have the power to overcome our sins because the laws was given to us and there's power in repentance. When you repent and keep the laws of God and maintain keeping God's commandments, that's your power right there. If you can have power over the sins that you have, guess what? You will have also, you also have power over the nations. You understand? Read. For what if some did not believe? Mm-hmm. Shall the unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Because that when we go to the streets and teach our people, it says, for what if some did not believe? Our people don't believe this. Some of our people do not believe this thing. That's why they'd be asking, what about the other nations? What about the Chinese? In fact, they never, say, they never ask about the Chinese or the Arabs. They always ask, what about the white man? You see that thing? But it says, for what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Just because they don't believe. What does the Bible say about that? Whether they believe it or not. Next verse. Go ahead. God forbid. Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. As it is written, mm-hmm. that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, really? and, mightest, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. So now, if the Apostle Paul comes over and says, God forbid, meaning no. It doesn't change anything whether they believe it or not. It's written, it shall come to pass. You understand? It says, let God be true and every man a liar, as it is written. Let the Bible speak, let the Bible be true. Every, any, every man a liar because every man will come with their own imaginations not the bible okay so the power and advantage we have is what is the laws of god repentance is our power we have the power because repentance is open unto us watch this give me now the book of acts now okay let's 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 go into let's give an example of what happened to our four, one of our forefathers that repented you see the power that the lord put upon him to do the things that he done. Give me the book of Acts. Acts chapter, let me see what I want. Give me Acts chapter 6, verse 8. Let's start there. Acts chapter 6, verse 8. Watch this. The book of Acts chapter 6, verse 8. Mm -hmm. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. So Stephen was one of the brothers that was selected to deal with the with the business of the church. You understand? Because in verse, verse 1 through verse 4, it goes into the widows that were neglected. You understand? Because they needed to be taken care of by the church. And the apostles are like, listen, why should we serve tables and deal with the widows when we're supposed to be focusing on ministering to the people and teaching the, teaching the word? Select men that are a good report that will be able to handle over this business. Stephen was one of those men. Read on. Then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called synagogue of the The synagogue of the the Libertines. The Libertines. Go ahead. Which is called the synagogue of the Libertines and Cyrenians. Cyrenians is an... Cyrenia is Cyrene, which is in Libya, in Africa. Okay. Cyrenian, hold this. Give me Acts 13. Um, Acts chapter 13. I'm going to show you something. Acts 13 verse 1. Watch this. The book of Acts chapter 13 verse 1. Read. Now there were in the church there was in Antioch certain prophets and teachers. As Barnabas and Simeon, there was called Nigger. Read. And Lucius, and Lucius of Cyrene. Cyrene is in Libya. And Lucius of Cyrene, he says, the pro- he says Simeon, that was called nigger. So nigger is actually Niger, which means black. Nigger, Niger, Nigeria. So these, pro- these brothers, they were in those lands. 
Niger, Nigeria, and so forth. You understand? Libya, okay? Chad. They were in those they were in those areas in Africa on the continent. Go ahead. And and mani and man manayan. Manayan. Read on. Manayan, which had been brought up with Herod, the Tetriarch, and Saul. Saint Saul, Saul, which later became Paul. Okay, go back to Acts now, chapter six. Acts chapter six and verse nine. The book of Acts chapter six verse nine. Mm -hmm. Then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of Libertines, and Cyrenians, and Alexandrians. Alexandria. And them... Remember Alexandrians. Ale remember um, who took over? Who took over Egypt? Alexander, Alexander the Great, he conquered Egypt and later on was taken by one of Alexander's generals, Ptolemy. Ptolemy took over, he took over, he took over, Alex, he took over Egypt. So now when it says Alexandrians, this is talking about our brothers and sisters in Egypt, which is in Africa. Go ahead. The book of Acts, chapter 6, verse 9. Mm-hmm. Then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the Libertines and Cyrenians and, Ale and Alexandrians, and of them of Cecil Cilicia. Cilicia. That's Rome. Cilicia, that's Rome. Read on. And of Asia. That's Greece, Asia Minor. Asia Minor. Read on. Disputing with Stephen. So they were disputing with Stephen. They were arguing with him because he had the Holy Ghost upon him. He had the laws of God. He had the spirit of understanding. So he was what? He was setting things in order. And our people don't like law and order. That's why they were disputing with Stephen. Read. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. Oh, praise to the Most High. Go ahead. Then they sub subbond men, which said, we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. Now they are lying on the brother. You understand? He says, we heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. Read on. And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes and came upon him and caught him and brought him to the council. They brought their Stephen to the council. You understand? So that they can deal with him because they lied on him and the people that really hated what he was teaching, they really wanted to bring harm to the brother. Go ahead. And set up false witnesses, which said, this man ceaseth not to speak blasphemous words against the holy, holy place and the law. They are lying on the brother. Read on. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs which Moses delivered us. Where is it written? Because we just read it. He never said that. Okay, go ahead. And all that sat in the council, looking steadfastly on him, saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. Meaning what? He was filled with wisdom. His, his face was shining. He was glowing with wisdom. Watch this. Give me X now. Chapter, give me X 751. X 751, we're going to read down to verse 60, okay? Because remember, this, this chapter right here, Acts chapter 7, this is Stephen's counsel. He is rebuking Israel now. He is keeping them in check. He is correcting them. He is rebuking them in front of everyone. You understand? They are mad as hell. Watch this. Acts 751. The book of Acts chapter 7 verse 51. Read. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost, as your fathers did, so do ye. Mm -hmm. Read. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them, which, which, which showed before of the coming of, of the just one, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers. Go ahead. Who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. Go ahead. Come on. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart 
and they gnashed on him with their teeth. You see that thing? When they heard what he was speaking, they were cut to the heart, meaning that was mad as hell. Read on. But he being, he, but he being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Now that's heavy right there. So could you imagine? It says he was full of the Holy Ghost. So if the Holy Ghost was a person, how would this happen? I mean, let's think now. If the Holy Ghost is a person and it says he was full of the Holy Ghost, what does that mean exactly? I'm just showing you that Christianity is spiritual crack. It's worse than Nyaupe, I'm telling you. The most dangerous drug on the market and the most easily accessible, Christianity. Okay? Read on. And said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Read. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord. You see, as he's explaining these things, it says they cried out with, with a loud voice, meaning there was loud, there was a commotion, and stopped their ears. They were blocking their ears and ran upon him with one accord. Now imagine a multitude coming against you. You understand? To do what? To kill you. Read. And cast him out of the city and stoned him. Mm. And what? And, they, and cast him out of the city and stoned him. They stoned Stephen. They, was, they stoned the brother. Go ahead. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul. So now there was this young man that was among them. So they laid his clothes at the young man's feet. That's Saul. Saul. Go ahead. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Mm, that's some heavy stuff right there. Read on. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin in their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. So now the reason why he died, okay, because in verse 55, he says, and being full of the Holy Ghost, look looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Because remember what the scripture says, it says, no man can see my face and live. Stephen, he saw that. He was shown that. That's why he was not, he could not live to tell the tale. You understand? He could not live to tell the tale because they stoned him, but he saw all of that. You understand? Watch this. Remember now, we just, Saul now is introduced into the picture. Saul, because he was consenting to Stephen's death. When they were stoning Stephen, he was in agreement with it. Okay? Now Acts chapter 9 verse 1. The book of Acts chapter 9 verse no, no. 1. I'm sorry, Acts 8 verse 1. I'm sorry, Acts chapter 8 verse 1. The book of Acts chapter 8 verse 1. Read. And Saul was consenting unto his death. And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Because the apostles, what the apostles was in Jerusalem, you understand, was still in Jerusalem, they were not scattered yet. But what you want to see here is that, he says, Saul, he says he was con he consented to Stephen's death, you understand? And there was great persecution against the church. Meaning our forefathers, the apostles, were being persecuted for teaching the gospel of Christ. Okay? So don't think that what happened back then is not going to happen today. Of course it will. Just understand that. What happened back then is going to happen today. Because look at what's happening in, the, in, in Russia. In Russia, they banned the churches. Okay? In the U.S., what is Joe Biden doing? Joe Biden has put out a decree. Which is, which is calling domestic terrorism about the extreme, the, 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 um, about the extremist groups. You understand? Those that are pushing radical messages and all of that, including religi religious groups that are pushing things that are contrary to what is accepted to be the message that everybody should learn, like Christianity, like Islam. So anything outside of these popular whatever says, no, 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 don't listen to them. So they've set aside a budget 
they say, listen, if you if you know any anybody, including your family members that are involved in an extreme group, he says you must tell the government about it. So they've already set out the budget. You can Google it. They've set out a budget to do that. So now you have to think about it and say, okay. So if that's the case, what do you think is going to happen to us? Because they is that they won't say religious groups, he just put a vague term. That means we also include, the, especially us, because what we're teaching, we are teaching the fall of the, of the empire that's ruling over us right now. We are teaching the fall of America, the fall of Europe, the fall of Russia. All these kingdoms that are ruling, we are teaching against them. When we teach that the America is going to be destroyed with nuclear, with nuclear war, um, you understand, with uh, thermonuclear destruction, it's in the Bible. So what happened back then is going to happen today. Okay, watch this. Keep going. Verse 2. Verse 2. And devout man carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. Go ahead. Come on. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering mm. into every house and howling men and women committed committed them to prison. You see what they are, we see what Saul was doing? Saul, he says, he made, a, he made havoc of the church. He was persecuting our fathers, our mothers for following and teaching the gospel of Christ. And he says what? He was hailing, he, he, was, he went into every house, hailing men and women, committed them to prison. Okay? That is what was going on. And he was doing that thing. Acts chapter 9 now, verse 1. Acts 9 verse 1. The book of Acts, chapter 9, verse 1. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto high priest. He went unto desired... the high priest. Hold on. He went unto the high priest. Remember, the high priest, he was working for the high priest. They were the ones that were sending him to go to these places where the, 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 the followers of Christ was, the disciples to what? To persecute them, okay? To cause havoc and to scatter them. To stop teaching the gospel of Christ. That is what Saul was doing. Following the commands of the high priests. Read on. And desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogue, that he found, that he found any of this way. No, no. That if, that if he found any of this way, meaning those that followed Christ, Read that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them to bound unto Jerusalem. You said that he must bring that you he would bring them bound unto Jerusalem, meaning commit them to prison, bring them to the chief priests. Read on. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. Read. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecuted, why persecutest thou me? Mm -hmm. And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Meaning what? What you are doing is not going to work. You are, you are, you, it's like, it's, Basically, what he's doing, what Christ is saying to, to, to Saul, is that, listen, you are kicking against the pricks, meaning you're trying, to, you're trying to stop a moving train. You can't. The gates of hell will not prevail against this gospel. Okay? That's what he's saying to him. Read on. And, it, and he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what will thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. You see what he's saying? He's telling Christ, listen, what, you, what would you have me to do? Because what I'm doing, I'm following, I'm following at the orders of the high priests, of the chief priests. Read on. And the man which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. So now you can imagine, he says, the man which journeyed with him, the man that journeyed... He says, the man with Janet with him stood speechless, 
hearing a voice but not see and but seeing no man. He saw the apostle Paul talking to somebody, but he's not seeing this somebody that is talking to him. Okay, go ahead. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were open, he saw no man, but they laid him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. I'm thinking about something else. The apostle Paul is speaking to, there's a voice speaking to the apostle, but he cannot see who he's talking to. Although he can hear the voice, but he can't see him. Read. Verse 8. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. Come on. And he was three days without sight, and neither did he eat nor drink. Read. And there was a certain disciple at, Dam at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. Read. And, the Lord said, and the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street, which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas, for one called Saul of Tartus. For behold, he prayed, he, mm -hmm. he prayed. Read. And had seen a vision, a man named Ananias, coming, coming in and putting his hand on him, that he might receive his sight. Read. Then Ananias answered, answered Lord, I have heard by many of this men, how much evil he had done to thy saints at Jerusalem. You see that thing? Now he's coming to this to this man's house. Remember, the Lord is told Ananias, listen, go to such and such a house. You understand? You're going to find a man. This man is talking about Saul now, of Tarsus. Okay? He says, he prayeth, but had seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Remember, he's lo he has lost sight. He's blind now for three days. Okay? Keep going. Verse 14. And here he had authority from the chief priest to bind all that call the to bind all that call on thy name. You see what he's saying? Because he was following the orders of the chief priest. Remember, the chief priest, they hated Christ. Not only did they hate Christ, but they hated those that followed Christ. You understand? Not only did they hate Christ, but they hate those that followed him. So that is what we are reading here. Go ahead. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my, na to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. So you see that thing? So the apostle Paul now is still Saul. He's not Paul yet. But he's chosen to do what? To do the will of the Father. So that's why it says to go to the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. So you would read this. In the churches, they just ignore this verse. It says to the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. We read in the book of Acts 2.36 that to all, this message is to the Israelites. When you get to the book of Acts 9, now everything has changed now. Now it's everybody. No. Okay. Is not talking about everybody. Go ahead. For I will sh for I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. He says, now I'm gonna show I'm gonna, I'm gonna show him great things, the things what the things he has to go through for this gospel. The same thing that was told the apostle Paul back then is the same thing that was told to us. We're going to have to suffer, brothers and sisters. Understand that? We're going to have to suffer for the name of the Lord, for this gospel, for keeping the commandments in the faith of Christ. To teach that Christ is black, God is black, we are the Israelites, the kingdom of heaven belong and pertain unto us. This is offensive to the rest of the world. The rest of the world is offended by this. Because you see, our people are offended by this. Because our people are the same ones that were saying, should we release Barabbas or Christ? They say, release Barabbas, keep Christ in prison. They are the ones that say, crucify him. You think the same people back then, you, see, you think they are not back today? Of course they are back. 
All those wicked spirits back then, they are back today. The righteous is back, the, the wicked is back also of Israel. They are the ones that be saying, yeah, they are the ones they be teaching that Christ is black. That's him right there. That's him right there. The women also, they are the ones that want to do that. Remember what, what when, when during the time when um, Christ was going to be crucified and this woman met Peter and he said, he, he also, him also, when the apostle Peter was, uh, was, was warming his hands, okay, the woman pointed him out and said, he, he's, he also follows Christ, this one. This one also, also follows Christ. And that's when the apostle Peter said, mm -mm, I don't know who you're talking about. That's not me. Guess what? What happened back then is going to happen today. Just understand this thing. That's the condition of the battle. Okay? Watch this. Now, um, jump down to verse 20. Acts chapter 9, verse 20. The book of Acts chapter 9, verse 20. Mm -hmm. And straightway he preached, he preached Christ in the synagogues that he is the son of God. Remember now, now the Apostle Paul has been given the gospel now, okay? He's been given the gospel after the event that happened that was he was knocked out of the horse, he was blind for three days, okay? Now he says, he, after he received what his mission, because right now he's getting his mission now, what he's supposed to do, okay? Christ is giving him a mission of what he must do. That's the same thing with us today. We have been called in to do a job and we must accomplish this mission. Read verse 20 again. The book of Acts, chapter 9, verse 20. Mm -hmm. And straight, straight away he preached Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. Go ahead. But all that heard him were amazed and said, Is not this he that destroyed them which called on this name in Jerusalem? And which and came hither for that for that intent that he might bring them bound unto the chief priests. You see that because remember now, I mean you you really, you have to imagine this, right? Here is, is Saul. He was going around killing the followers of Christ, killing the, 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 the those that believed on the Messiah. Now he's the same one that is turning around and be saying. Okay, now you um, he's, he's now he's, he's the same the same one that was persecuting the church. Now he's teaching about Christ now. So you think the people are gonna just easily receive him? No. They don't trust him with good reason, because he was going around killing the followers of Christ. Okay, so that's why they are saying what they are saying to themselves here. Okay, read on. But Saul increased the more in strength. And confounded the Jews which dwelt at Damascus, proving that this is very, that this is very Christ. So now he says, the, the, because remember, he understood the mission, and he also understood that the thing that he was doing, guess what? He guess what? That was some evil stuff that he was doing. So now he's been given a chance to repent. Now he's given a chance to repent. So you see what he's doing? He says the more that they were persecuting him, the more he increased more and more in strength. Why? Because he realized that what was what Christ brought him out of. So he, now he's, he's not taking his mission light. He's taking his mission, his mission seriously. He's understanding the gravity of the situation. That's why I always tell you, man, you better study. You understand? You better sit down and study this book. We don't got time. I don't need dummies around me. I need men to study because we have a job to do, okay? So you see the spirit the apostle Paul had? When he was told, listen, this is the mission, he put, he, he sunk himself in that mission, okay? He soaked in the mission. Read verse 22 now again. The book of Acts, chapter 9, verse 22. But Saul increased the more in strength and confounded the Jews which dwelt at Damascus proving that this is very Christ. Now watch this. Next verse. Go ahead. And after that many days were fulfilled, the Jews took counsel to kill him. You see that thing? Now the Jews are like, listen, we need to, we need to take this guy out because if we don't, he's going to kill us. Based on what he used to do, his past life. Okay? Now watch this. Give me 
Give me the book of 1 Corinthians 15 verse 9 now. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 9. Now remember the apostle Paul, he started to grow strong and strong in the spirit. Okay, watch this. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 9. The book of First Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 9. You know what? You know what? Mm. Give me Second Corinthians, okay? Second Corinthians, chapter 5. Second Corinthians, chapter 5, and verse 17. Okay? The book of Second Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 17. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if any man be in Christ... He is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So the Apostle Paul understood this. He says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. You are a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So now he go, he's going to show us that we how to walk worthy of the vocation wherewith we are called. Watch this. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 9, now. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 9. Mm -hmm. For I am the least of the apostles, that am, am not meek to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. So he's telling you what he did in the past. But what we just read in 2 in uh, Corinthians, chapter 5, he understands that. Watch this. Next verse. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. Was not I what? Lived, was not in vain. So the apostle Paul is saying, listen, I am the least of the apostle. I'm not even qualified to be called an apostle. Okay? But what he's telling me, he says, he says, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. You understand? It says, and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. He said, listen, I'm not going to waste the time that is allocated for me to do the work. That's what he's saying right there. He says, his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. Meaning what? I'm not going to make the most I regret make bringing me into this truth. That's what he's saying right there. Read. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Read. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. You see what he's saying? He says, but I labored more abundantly than they all. He said, listen, those that came before me, I'm going to do a hundred times more. Why? Because I understand the time that is available for me to do this work. To please the Lord that brought me into this truth. To please the Lord that had mercy on me to bring me into this truth. I'm going to what? I'm going to make sure that I put in the work. I'm going to labor. That's that word right there, it says, and I, it says, I labored more abundantly than they all. I put in the work, I did the work which I was called for. Okay, read on. Therefore, whether it, whether it were I or they, so we preach, and so ye believed. You see, so we preached, and so ye believed. Go ahead. That's what's going on right now. Read. Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? Because there are those that did not believe, okay? They didn't believe this truth. Watch this. Give me 2 Corinthians eleven twenty six. Second 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 26. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 26. Read. In journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by mine own countrymen, in perils mm. by heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren. Now that's heavy right there. So he says, I'm going through this for the sake of the gospel. He says, in perils of water, because they had to sail on ships. Okay, in perils of robbers, they got robbed. He said, I got robbed behind this. In perils of my own countrymen, meaning what? I was afflicted by those of my own people. In perils by the heathen, meaning by the other nations. In perils in the city, I was persecuted in the city. In perils in the wilderness, as he was traveling from city to city, island to island. 
in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren. That's the worst one right there. You understand? Brothers that come into the truth, they pretend that they are, about, they are for this truth. They don't believe nothing this Bible says. They are just waiting. They are just waiting for something to go down. So they can use it as an excuse to say, to hell with you niggas, I'm out. You see that thing? They're just waiting, abiding their time. You understand? They're going to use something, an event that happens as an escape. And they go out there, they're going to be speaking evil of us, making YouTube videos. Listen, those things, they are going to happen. Okay? They are going to happen. So when I see, brothers, something is like, you be corrected about the same thing over and over, you don't fix it. Guess what? You are a Judas to me. Because you don't care. You don't want to fix. You don't want to apply yourself to work hard to get rid of this thing. It just keeps coming, coming over and over. Hmm. Judas. Just a betrayer waiting to happen. You are a ticking time bomb. You are a powder cake. Okay. Sisters too. I'm not excluding the sisters out of this. Keep going. Verse 27. In weariness and in painfulness. In watching often. In watchings often, in hunger and in thirst, in mm -hmm. fasting, fastings often, in cold and nakedness. So the Apostle Paul says, I listen, I went through this stuff in watchings often, hunger and thirst, in fastings often. And a lot of the times he says, I would fast, not because I want to fast, but because I don't have food. So I'm just going to fast. Okay. Just so that this gospel can go out. You see that thing? And it says, in cold and in nakedness. No, sometimes not having clothes and all that. But the gospel had to go out. That's what he's saying. So he's telling you that I was not rich doing this. Just like today. We struggle. Listen, you see this video that you see on YouTube? <laughs> we don't have high definition cameras. We're using our phones to do this. Okay? Because we believe this truth. Whatever little pennies we've got, we put them together we are able to come together and do something great in the spirit of Christ. Okay, go ahead. Beside those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. He says, with all of the struggles that I'm going through, I still care for the churches still. I'm still caring for the churches. You understand? I still have to go out and do the work. Guess what? So it is today. The same things that the apostles was doing back then, that's the same thing we are doing today. We're going to places to teach the gospel to people that we don't even know. People that they've never seen us before, but we go out there to put our lives on the line for their sakes. You understand? Why? Because we believe what is written. We want the kingdom of heaven to come. We want the Lord to come and deliver us from the hand of our enemies, from the atrocities that we go through, from the afflictions that we go through day by day. Okay, go ahead. Who is weak? No, that's it. You know what? That's it on that. That's it on that. Give me 2 Timothy 4, verse 6. 2 Timothy 4, verse 6. Watch this. The book of 2 Timothy, chapter 4, verse 6. Mm -hmm. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. Read. Meaning what? He was, he, was, he was going to be killed. Okay. That's why it says, now I'm ready to be offered as a sacrifice now. You are, read on. I have fought a good fight. Mm. I finished my course. I Wait. have kept the faith. Meaning what? I kept the faith. I did not leave this truth. No matter what was going on, no matter what, what troubles I was going through, you understand? Because the Apostle Paul was dealing with a lot of sexual sins. You understand? Evil concupiscence and all of that. That is the thorn that was in his flesh. That's why Christ says, listen, he begged the Lord three times to get rid of He said, no, you, my grace is sufficient. You have to fight. You can't sit back and just take it. No, he said you must fight. Okay, so it is today. Okay, go ahead. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at the day. And not to me only, but unto all them that also love his, love his appearing meaning the appearing of Christ when the Lord returns. So what I wanted to show you, brothers and sisters, is this. That there's power in repentance. You see what the Apostle Paul was involved in? Guess what he did? When the Lord called him to come and do the work, 
He repented. He understood he's a new creature. He was not dwelling on what happened, what he used to do. He wasn't dwelling on that. You have to understand the, 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 the persecution that was coming upon him, the, 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 the pushback that he received when he was going out there to teach. Because the people used to know him as this. Uh, he was a killer. You understand? He was killing the prophets. He was putting a lot of them in prison and all of that, destroying their families and, what, and whatnot. Now it's time for him to know what to do, what? To put, to, to put himself on the line to defend the gospel now. Now it's time for him to do that. Christ called him. Guess what? what? I'm just giving you simple examples of the apostle Paul, what he did. Three quarters of the New Testament was written by him. Three quarters of the New Testament was written by the apostle Paul. Because when, he's, he, he, when the Lord called him, listen, he didn't play with this. He went all in. He said, I'm going to get this work done. Whatever happens to me, wherever, where I die, I die, and so what? The, where the mission is a go. Guess what? The mission is a go. That's our motto. The mission is a go. Okay? There is no looking back. The mission is a go. Understand that thing. Okay? Watch this. Hmm. Okay, okay. I'm going to end it. Let's right here. I'm going to end it here. I wanted to go somewhere else, but nah, I won't do that. So what I want to show you is that whatever issues that you are dealing with, you can overcome it. Whatever problems that you think you got, you think you cannot overcome it. Listen, obviously you are not studying. There is no problem that you have in, 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 in your life that is not written in this Bible. Whatever you are going through, somebody else in the past, our forefathers and foremothers, they've gone through it and they've overcome. So you also can overcome. There is no excuses. Let's break bread in the honor of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do ye in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat of this bread and drink of this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and so let him, eat of, let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the Most High a hand for that class. All praise to the Most High. All praise.